and my name's Damien House. I'm from Sydney. I have currently been a non-smoker for 14, I'd say 15 months. I smoked for 14 years. Um, I smoked, I probably started when I was about 17. I had to go on some medication which made me short of breath. Um, and it was either the medication or the cigarettes. And I was always interested in sports and part of the reason I smoked was due to stress. Um, and it became an, a habit, um, and which, with like all things, I found it hard to get rid of. Um, but it was either one or the other, and I decided that it, um, it would be smoking. Cravings, dreams, nightmares. I would wake up at night and um, while I'm asleep, and I would have a cigarette while I'm asleep. Like, this is me sleeping, but the dream would be so real that I'd wake up in the morning and I'd believe that I had a cigarette. And I, and I, and I, but then it'd take two, it would take literally an hour, an hour and a half into the day where, where I know that I have, because I'm like, no, I'm not having a cigarette, I'm not having a cigarette, I'm not, and it's like, hang on, where did you take the time to have a cigarette? Where is the packet? Where's the lighter? Where's the ash? Like, no, nothing. So, um, but that happened for about six months. Do you know what I mean? And it was, it was, it was like it was pulling me back in. Like, it was like, you know, every time I'd wake up in the morning and think I'd have one, I'd be like, oh, well, I had one. You know what I mean? And so it'd be hard to think that I didn't have one, but I actually didn't. And just getting past the mind gaff. So, like, you go to the pub and you see, you know, all the people having a drink and having a smoke, you know, because you know those two feelings together combined felt good. Do you know what I mean? A cigarette and a beer. Do you know what I mean? Um, and the hardest thing for me was New Year's when my girlfriend was sitting in front of me and she's like, oh, can you go bludge me a cigarette? I'm like, but I've just quit. How can you ask me to go bludge you a cigarette? And then I go bludge you a cigarette and it's one of those um, ones that... Um, Tastes disgusting, and she says you got to return it. So I went and returned it, and it's like, sorry, she doesn't want it because it's just one of those ones that tastes disgusting. Sorry for even asking, and I was like an idiot. I smoked Yandi, um, and I got locked up as a juvenile, and found it easier to get cigarettes than it was to get pot or Yandi into the homes, or whatever it was. Um, and because of that, I started smoking um, tobacco you know, rollies and stuff. And it was just for a stress, for a de-stress thing. And, and that's what, and I always like, when I was younger, I'd see my, like, you'd, being hungry sometimes, you know what I mean? And you'd see your mum and your stepdad, they'd be smoking. And you'd think, they cost you 15 bucks. Why would you buy that rather than a feed? You know what I mean? So you'd be thinking, they must have tasted good. So I don't know, like, it was that as well, but it was like, You've seen it happen, you've seen it done, you think it's okay, you do it. Part of my issue was I couldn't deal with stress, I couldn't deal with issues and, and you know, seeing someone where now I can deal with those issues also helped with quitting cigarettes. I'm a big believer in if you're going to do something, you need to do it with the mindset that it's going to get done because even if you try the patches or you get the taste of nicotine or the, it's the habitual habits that you need to change, you know what I mean? And that's what I did. Well, when I first started trying to quit cigarettes, the, the habit that I have was smoking with these two fingers. So I went from these two to these two, and I even changed, I went to this hand, I changed it this way. I, I used any way I could, so as not to stay in that one moment, because I know three months makes a habit. And for three months, I did everything but smoke like that. So that when it was like normal to smoke this way, it didn't feel normal. You know what I mean? So then I just was like, okay. And then what I did is every day, I'd wake up and I'd have one hour, an hour later. You know, until I got to the point when it'd be 11 o'clock at night and I'd be like, why do I need a cigarette? Don't need it. I am 10 kilos lighter on a maintained basis. Like I, being a smoker, I think it makes you lazy, um, which makes you eat more. Um, because you know you eat more after you eat you have a cigarette do you know it's combined they, they go in combination you know what I mean and because I don't smoke I don't eat as much 
um, and the combination is that I feel healthier. Like there's those signs that you see out that three um, within one hour, you know, like you feel be- or within eight hours yeah. excess. You know, it's all true. You know, what I mean, seeing that sign is like a good thing. Like I think it's part of that. I saw that so- when I first decided to quit. I saw that sign, and I was like, "Wow, that's going to happen!" And I just need to do it. Eating's better, like you know, like I, I, I kissing my girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? Just the simple things that you take for granted, like you see, like you stink, clothes, kids, my son. You know, I'm I part of the reasons why I quit is because I don't want my son's thinking that it's the cake because it's a drug that's going to kill him in the end. You know what I mean? And I and, and I don't want that. I'd say change it because if you were scared of dying, you're definitely putting yourself in a position where you're going to have to either survive death by cancer or, um, you know, poor lifestyle, you know what I mean? You spend so much more money. I've got so much more money as well, you know, in my pocket, you know what I mean, which allows me to go out, which allows me to do more things. So socially, I'm, I'm more active, you know what I mean? And they're the things that you've got to understand, like people who smoke and who want to spend their last five bucks or 10 bucks on a pack of the cigarettes, won't have that money to get in the city and say, mate, it's an addiction. You know, if, if you look at what they, what they do for every other type of addiction, if you're a heroin addict, they, give you, they try and give you a free treatment with regards to now troxone and all that stuff these days, right? But if you're a cigarette addict, what they've done is they've tripled the price of cigarettes. And don't tell me the companies who make the cigarettes aren't making the same money that they do. You know, it's just that the, the government's getting more money because they're putting a tax on something that, that's an addiction. You know what I mean? And I don't understand the tax on addiction. I understand the tax on, you know, making, making things better but not making things worse. Like if you scratch and then you scratch, it becomes a habit. You know what I mean? You got an itch. It becomes an itch. You know what I mean? It's not that it's there. It becomes a mental thing. You know what I mean? And unless you can change the, the mental aspect of how you want to you know it's and it's it's definitely comes down to choice as well like a person wants to have to quit